Hi, I'm Luke Surveld. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today, we're gonna to talk about some aperture accessories. These are accessories that are now becoming available uh, for uh, the P300C. So that's the panel light uh, that's a full color. There's a battery adapter for that. And then there's some doors, uh, the Fresnel, and also uh, a door holder. Uh, and then I've also got uh, another little uh, fun thing, uh, a holder for two uh, 600Ds. So these are mostly for the 600D. You can use uh, some of these with uh, 300s as well um, for the you know, point source uh, cob lights. So let's get into it. We've got this uh, adapter which um, you can put two 14 volt batteries on and, and get 48 volts out, which is what you need to run your uh, Nova. Now, uh, I just have these very underpowered uh, IDX bats that are good for cameras. And this is just a 14.4 with a six amp hours. So it's 87 watt hour battery. So just, you know, um, not something you really want to use with your 300 if you want to get full output. But you can go ahead and use those, use two 14 volt bats and get 48 volts out. That's um, pretty slick if this is all you've got and you still want to get a little output. If I you know, go ahead and turn this on, here I am at uh, 0, 5600, and uh, I just bring that up and I can get a little out of that for a while. So now, you know, that's, I wouldn't want to go full on this. I've got 25% here. I don't know how long I would be able to uh, run that, but uh, if I had to go, I could still make this work. And with this adapter, you get adapter cables to make it work with your unit uh, because there is a turnaround needed to, uh, to, to get that in. So that's just one that I don't use very often, uh, but uh, it's nice to have it available. And then I did want to show you how I uh, load up my case here. Okay, so let's get these off of here. Now I'm putting this adapter in here. And then I've got this uh, offset. So offset so that uh, I can tilt down this unit when it has a, a soft box on it more easily. And then here is the clamp uh, for your, your, uh, your controller. And then this controller pops in there. These guys. Now, what I like to do is have this, I think when you get the unit, it's face up. And I like to put the face down just to Protect it, and then I put the uh, DOP choice snap grid in here, and then I just put the cables nearby on it like that, and away we go. So first off, let's get a 600D. So this is a C-stand cart with uh, boxes and bags, and then I have stingers. Uh, on, in two boxes and uh, uh, tools. And then I have uh, a 600D, 600D, and two Q5s. So uh, when I'm using the truck, then I put the 600s into milk crates. This is gonna be for an adapter we'll talk about in a minute, but I'm gonna put this on because it gives me two places to put units. Take the knob out, and then it's got a nice little holder for the knob. So I'll put that there. And then we'll put it into this side. Boom. And so we take off the plastic, and now you've got this adapter. So this adapter, there we go. Okay, so it's got a clasp on top, and this allows you to put uh, doors straight onto your open, your open unit. So now, with the open unit, you have the ability to have a set of doors and, and cut that. 
So uh, you can also put the doors on the Fresnel, obviously, but it's nice to have this adapter to your Bowens to be able to put nice doors onto uh, your 600D Pro. So then if we take that off, then you can just put your Fresnel on and now you can put your doors onto that. And you get this Bones adapter to doors, you get this adapter with your doors, as far as I know. I mean, I did. So, uh, and then, you know, again, if you're changing the focus of your Fresnel, there's a good deal of play, which is nice, or not play, but a nice change there. And um, there you go. Okay, so we got power to it. And now this is just with the, uh, uh, with, you know, an open cob basically. And if we turn this on to, uh, it's like 10%, okay? And so, you know, nice <laughs> wide beam on that. And if we put on some doors, and maybe we back this off a little. Now if we turn this off, you see that. So yeah, you're not spot or spotting or flooding or anything. You can't do anything to the light uh, in that sense, but uh, you can cut it when it's open, when it's uh, just raw. And uh, you can actually get a half decent, uh, a little bit, you know, boxy feel there. Fill that in. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so now let's put the Fresnel on. Again, that's just 10%. Okay, so now with that other light off, There's your spot. Then panning that around. There's a little halation, obviously. So you have some, you know, rings of of light here there, skipping off the front of it. But now let's put some doors on. Let's see how that works. So that's cut it right off so you don't have that spill anymore. So a nice set of doors there. And you got your cuts. Yeah, very workable unit. So now put two of these units onto this rabbit ears. This adapter fits right onto these uh, rabbit ears uh, very simply, just with three knobs and it goes into an existing rabbit ears. You just use the, uh, the little sliders that you use to put on your regular brackets for like for the Nova uh, or a sky panel and which are different and and I've marked them so that I can put these brackets back to where they go for the Nova but I can slide them out of the way and then use one of the underlying uh, uh, keepers uh, to screw in the adapter and now this adapter has two bones mounts so that you can put two units next to each other and get that output into uh, whatever modifier you decide to put on it. So let's do it. Okay, so we line this up. Let's see 
you want to tighten it so that it will lock and then loosen the slider so I can rotate it. Okay, then we'll put a second one in. So I got that in. And then I guess we rotate this so that it's lined up. I'm going to loosen these up so they'll allow me to do what I need to do. Boom. Now that's interesting. That seems to be, okay, so we'll keep it down here. So if I want to go into the, the indent, then these knobs seem to be, oh no, I can, they are movable. I think it's not as easy as I'd like it to be. You can change it once it's stiff, but when it's loose, then it's hard to have control of it because there's no knob out here. So now, if I take that whole thing and pop it in there, whoa, that's quite a beefy deal, huh? And the offset doesn't allow me to bring it around here with this stand uh, unless I have it higher and then I can come around because I want to have it over the leg. Okay, so now this is, uh, you know, 4% on each of these. And let's just, um, if, if we loosen both bales, then we have some play here and want to see how that works with the modifier on it. So there you go. And then we can spin that like Zoe. But in order for me to be able to lock this down, this knob has to, or on this particular stand, it's got to be a little bit uh, higher. It's got to be raised in order to get the knob around. So that's a little funky. Now we'll put our five foot octa on here and we'll see how well this goes. Actually, I'm going to take this off. What if I put these down a little bit? Will that work? I don't know. You really got to put the top ones on. That actually went pretty easily. Now let's see what kind of movement we've got. So up, down to there. So we could potentially put this, if we needed to get it over a little more, we could uh, put that adapter on it. Uh, let's see how heavy this thing is. Okay, that sits there. Get a little tilt action. And let's see how our stand's doing, just fine. And then let's try our tilt. So tilt action, boom, and woohoo! That's pretty nice. So let's tighten that up. This is all here, okay. We have our weight over the leg. And let's just go up a little bit. I'll have to get our, well, I could put these two control boxes onto the stand. 
that would work. Uh, let me shift that over to the leg. Pop these on. And now let's go up a little bit. So there you go. There's uh, there's your octa, and that's at ten percent on each unit. So I think having the offset does help you. Uh, that's not a bad thing. And just to give you a visual of the back of it, there you go. And then here's the front. That is going to be a good deal of output for uh, your five foot octa. And I guess you could get a three foot octa going on this as well. Obviously, this is too close, but um, you know, that's a really nice, uh, soft light with a lot of output. And we'll take the Nova off. There we go. Same deal, really nice and soft. You know, this is a the full uh, full white, and uh, yeah, I guess this is from my other Octa. So <laughs> it's uh, but it's it's basically magic cloth, and um, there you go. So yeah, just a nice uh, soft light that you can have a major amount of output if you need it, and. Now, let's play with the Lantern. We'll go with the Lantern 90. Now, this isn't an, a new accessory. The SE is the new accessory, but let's just play with this. And then we can also um, play with the Menace Arm. So if you've got just a regular standard Menace Arm with uh, modern grip uh, parts, and what this is is an eight foot piece of one and quarter speed rail, and then I have a short piece on the back with uh, an inline joiner. And then I have an American uh, beefy lollipop here to lock it off. And I have baby pin on the front and junior on the back, but I don't care about that. All I really want here is the loop. Now, if it was a really heavy thing, I would do uh, a strap from the front to the top here and from here to the back. But what I'm gonna do instead is put the load on the front and then do a ratchet strap from the back here to the stand. And it would be good if I had sandbags and all that, but uh, right now we're just gonna do it uh, really simply. And um, how I'm gonna load it is like a jib. And so I'm gonna start it with the uh, load, put the load on the front. In retrospect, I probably should have put the junior receiver on the front end and just used the junior pin of the unit on that uh, because that would have gotten the unit up a little bit higher. And that's always a good thing when you're on a menace. So anyway, that's retrospect. Uh, this works as well. And of course, there's a safety on it. Now we have the weight further back, which is good. That gives you that. And if you want to go up with it now, it's a little tricky and you really should have someone that goes up on a ladder that can take the weight and go up with it. Uh, I'm going to try to do it. Um, just don't do this at home. So pull this out. 
And now I'm going to actually hold on to this and this and loosening it. And now if I loosen all these things and I go up with it, So now I'm up, I lock that, and I have my ratchet, I ratchet, and I can put a little half hitch in here, maybe two. And now I have a unit that I can loosen and roll around. Now, obviously, I should have bags on the back here, uh, duh, but uh, that is, uh, you know, it's, it's balanced in as far as this is concerned, uh, but the ratchet is what is making it work here. So you could put weight on the back here as well, but uh, just wanted to show you uh, how this lantern then, you know, can be wheeled into place with this, uh, Matthew's panel stand. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. This isn't a big deal, but I wanted to show you just the uh, way that the shadows worked uh, with my hand. Uh, I didn't have the other unit off, which was, you know, kind of adding to the illumination, but still, it's a little different quality of shadow than when you put your hand in front of it. And so I just wanted to show you that uh, here you lose it when you in the post roll. Zoom in, but those really are beefy doors. I mean, it's a big Fresnel and beefy doors. But yeah. It's uh, quite impressive, actually. And so, to get all that with a unit that is so in flexible sense, in other ways, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really a nice tool. So there you go. It's uh, yeah. quite a bit softer as you come towards the unit. Softer. And it does get hard eventually, but um, yeah, it's a nice quality for now.